Hey, in this video, I don't like that. Hey, in this video, nope. <gasps> hey. Hey. Hi. Hello. Okay, stop. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, in this video, I show you all the tips and tricks you need in order to paint a loose style floral wreath like this. It's really fun. We talk about complementary colors and harmony with colors. It's a blast. So make sure to watch to the end of the video as well because we're doing a giveaway. So exciting. Let's do this. <laughs> For this particular wreath, I'm doing a circular wreath. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a circle. If you feel really confident about drawing circles, you can by all means freehand a circle, or I've shown how to do circles, this specific te technique to get a circle in my other wreath video that's all illustration based. But you can also, I have this massive water bottle that's a circle. So I'm literally gonna place it in the middle of my watercolor paper, grab my Sumo Grip pencil, which again, all of the supplies I'm using in this video are linked below. Check it out. Um, so I'm literally just gonna trace this watercolor. If you have like a roll of tape or a circular jar, etc., you can put that down and trace over it. Just an easy way to get a circle. No need to struggle for circles. So, got my pencil. And I'm just lightly outlining this circle. It's a bit bumpy, but that's okay. We're gonna go with it. And this left edge is a bit wonky, so I'm just gonna try and make it, make it better. Ooh. And then just erase any lines that you don't wanna see, but leave the guide underneath. A big or popular question I get a lot when I have to sketch before I paint is how do you erase the pencil lines after you paint? The answer is you don't. So you sketch very lightly. There are pencils out there that I've never used that do dissolve in watercolor or something. I'm not really sure. So if this bothers you, then check that out. Can't recommend what the brands are or anything, but all I do is I sketch really lightly and I make sure that my watercolor is dark enough on top so that you don't see the sketch underneath. So no, you can't erase the pencil line once you add paint on top of it. It's kind of like a little barrier that paints the, bowl, the wall or the barrier. So just make sure you sketch really lightly if you don't want to see that pencil line showing through your watercolor because watercolor is transparent. So putting my pencil to the side and now we're going to talk color my absolute favorite subject to talk about is color and color relationships and color theory um i've spent a lot of time researching color theory a lot of time researching harmonies and emotions that you get when looking at colors etc and how to make pieces feel brighter or make them feel more peaceful, etc. And there's so much that you can do with color in color relationships. Uncool, bro. And there's so much that you can do with color and color relationships that it evokes specific feelings and moods within your piece just by using color and just by changing slight relationships between color. So what do I mean by, by color relationships. I actually go really into depth on color theory and color relationships in my book, Everyday Watercolor. So if you want to dive even further into this subject, make sure to check out that book. The link is below in the description. But essentially what I mean by color relationships is thinking about where colors sit next to each other on the color wheel. So if you need to pull one up, just type in Google color wheel and you'll see a lot of different options. Try to get one that has not just primary, secondary, or tertiary colors, but one that's a bit more expansive and there's a lot of colors in there, not just like six. So when you think about creating a smooth transition between colors, 
choose colors that sit right next to each other on the color wheel. So for example, if you have a red violet next to a mid-tone violet next to a blue violet, that, that's going to be called an analogous color palette. They are right next to each other on the color wheel and therefore are going to create the most peaceful and smooth transition of color, creating a more peaceful emotion when you look at the piece of or the painting. So I don't want to create that emotion right now. I want to create something that makes you feel, makes you feel alive, <laughs> that creates more punch and more vibrant and more push and pull, um, not strain, but we do walk a fine line when we use this particular color palette between strain and push and pull. So what I'm going to use today is a complementary or a contrasting color color palette. So you think about contrasting colors, people know what those are. Contrasting colors sit directly opposite of each, of each other on a color wheel. So if you're looking at one online, red and green, for example, sit directly opposite of each other. Blue and orange, purple and yellow. So these colors are contrasting. They, when next to each other, will make your piece pop. They will bring your eyes in. They will make the purple, the yellow will make the purple feel more vibrant and vice versa. But if it's used improperly and incorrectly, it can create way too much strain and people looking at your piece of, or your painting, will look at it and want to look away immediately and not know why exactly. And it's because the colors are creating disharmony, not sure if that's a word, and strain when they look at it. So you really are walking a fine line when you're working with contrasting colors. So one huge tip when working with contrasting colors, like for example, red and green, make red or green, one or the other, more dominant than the other. So have more reds than greens, or have lighter reds and darker greens, so the green is more dominant and the red is less dominant, whatever. Um, that one little tweak will make all of the difference when people are looking at your piece so that they're not thinking, oh, it looks too chaotic, it looks really straining to look at, or it's really straining to look at. It's probably because there's equal parts or equal dominance in both of your colors, your contrasting colors. So for my contrasting color palette today, I am going to use a version of orange and blue. So orange and blue are contrasting colors. I want it to feel more springy and a little bit softer. So instead of straight up orange as my complementary or contrasting color to blue, I am going, that was a deep inhale. <laughs> instead of using straight up orange, like cadmium orange next to blue, I am going to use a softer, lighter, peachier orange. So I'm gonna have like a pink and yellow mixture with a lot of water instead of just orange next to blue. And we're gonna create a lot of spring feeling with this wreath, so I'm gonna add in some yellow greens. So I bridge that gap between blue and orange because in between it on the color wheel is going to be green. And next to orange on the color wheel is yellow. So we have yellow in our yellow green, bridging the gap from peach or orange to yellow green, then to green, and then we have our blue, which is next to green after blue green. So we're doing this nice soft transition between our more dominant colors, the peach and the blue. But of course, making sure that one or the other of those complementary or contrasting colors is more dominant. So we're having a softer version of that orange by making it a peachier, lighter, peachier color, and our blue is gonna be a richer, darker blue, okay? If this isn't making sense because I'm just spewing words at you, it will make sense in a bit. I'm gonna pick up my brush first. And for this entire wreath, all I'm gonna be using is my size six round brush. I did an entire video all on how I paint leaves that I'm going to link here so that you can check it out before painting this wreath if you don't really know or aren't comfortable with painting leaves because there's gonna be a lot of leaves in this video and I don't want you to get stuck on them I'm not gonna take the time to go through how I paint these leaves because I have a whole other video on it. So we're just gonna go through that, talk about color mainly for this leaf, and talk about how to add some floral elements in a very simple, basic way. So all I'm using is a size six round brush. Again, in that leaf video that I mentioned before, I go about why I choose to use round brushes for loose style florals. They are two-in-one brushes. If you wanna learn more about it, go to that video. So. What I like to do for my loose style floral wreaths or frames or just bouquets is I like to paint 
a couple flower pieces first because they take up the most space. And then I add in my fillers like my sprigs and stems and leaves and berries, etc., to fill in that awkward amount of white space between my flowers. Um, my flowers, I want to usually, I want them to be my focal points. So I'm gonna start with those and then we're gonna add in our sprigs and leaves. So I'm gonna come up to my actual circle sketch and show you how to paint a really simple open peony, basic peony. To get this like subtle light peach color, I do use a lot of really vibrant colors from Windsor Newton, um, but you can achieve so many different values. So, so many different lightness and darknesses, darknesses of these colors by just adding water. So to make this a bit more of a subtle peach color, I'm starting with the base of Opera Rose, which is like a bright neon pink. Uh, bringing it into one of my mixing wells, adding a bunch of water to it, and I'm going to grab a touch of yellow ochre, which is like a brown yellow color, to make it a more subtle peach color. And then if I want a little bit of lemon yellow deep in it, just for that extra kick of vibrancy, I can. Um, but already I really like this color that I have in my palette. And then I can also add water to it on my brush to make it even lighter. I can add more pink to make it a more pinky peach or more yellow to make it a more yellow peach. You wanna switch up the values and the hues per flower. You don't want them all to be the same hue and value because that one little tweak will make all the difference in creating movement in your wreath. So I'm gonna load up my brush with this color I just mixed and I'm gonna lay down my first flower which is gonna be like an open, loose style basic peony. So because we're not painting realistically, we're painting in a more loose style, the main goal you wanna achieve here with loose style florals is to achieve proportions correctly and make sure that the sh overall shape is emulating the shape of whatever flower you're painting. So if you think about how a flower grows, it starts as a bud, which is usually the shape of like a sphere, a tight sphere or a ball. So the stem being here and then you have the bud right here. And then as the flower grows, the petals fall away from each other at the top, but stay connected to the main stem. So it creates kind of like a V shape if you're looking at the flower from the side. And then if you were to pull the flower down below your nose and you're looking straight down at the flower, all of the tops of these petals kind of create this circular shape. It's super basic. There's obviously more complexities and more folds and creases, et cetera, if you're painting a more realistic style floral. But with loose florals, you're just going for an overall shape and mixing up color and value and white space to make it look more, slightly more detailed. So if you were to paint a loose peony or anemone or something from the side, you would be going for the overall shape of a V because that's what it would look like in real life, essentially, if you're just grabbing the shape, extracting that and painting that. So you have a V shape from the side, an oval or circular shape if you're looking at a flower straight down. And then of course, if it's a bud, it's gonna be a circular ball shape. So I've got my size six brush. I'm gonna load up with this peach color I just mixed up and I'm going to paint a more open or the circular uh, straight down looking at an open peony shape first. So this first stroke that I'm about to do makes up all of the peonies that I'm gonna make on this wreath, but, they're, they'll, but they won't all be this perspective. So this is gonna be an open flower, but then some of them will be from the side, but I'm gonna use the same stroke that I'm about to do. So I'm gonna grab my peach color, and basically if our stamen is going to be right here, all of my petals are gonna to point back to where that stamen is, kind of like a star, like this is the middle of the star. So I'm flipping my brush on its side about 35 degrees. My handle is about 35 degrees away from the paper. And all I'm doing is bringing my brush up and down to make these simple petal strokes. So I can leave it like that, and that could be a side view of a peony, and I can add a stem right here and call it quits. But I'm gonna keep going all the way around this circular area um, where the stamen will go to create a full open flower. Now, all I'm gonna do here though, I don't want the same hue and same value for all of my petals, so I'm just going to grab water and lighten my mixture for this next portion. 
literally just pulling and dragging my brush. And then for these next petals, maybe add a touch of yellow. So we're still in the same peach family, but slightly mixing up the value and the hue. So because this is so yellow right here, I might grab a bit more yellow and punch it in over here to kind of blend that transition. So there we have an open peony or anemone. And now I'm just gonna add some yellow pollen and stamen in the middle by grabbing lemon yellow deep and yellow ochre and just using the point of my round brush and kind of, because these petals are still wet, it's going to bleed into it, which I love. And there we have our first floral. So from there, I'm gonna use that same peach hue that I mixed up, but a slightly more pink version. So I'm adding opera rose to it. And instead of choosing this perspective, I'm gonna do that side facing perspective over here. So I've got my round brush, just basically pushing three strokes and making sure all of these petals are pointing back to the center. So you, whoops, so you see a V shape. So I'm gonna keep going and using that same base of that peachy color I mixed up, but changing up the hue just slightly by adding more pink as I go along. And you can always, after you add leaves, add more flowers once you establish kind of the overall shape and thickness of your wreath. Um, but I, I usually like to start with just three or four flowers and then move on to stems and leaves. I'm gonna make this a bit brighter with some more opera rose, just a little touch. See how that variety between the colors just makes it move along the circle. So from here, where I can start next is by adding some stems to these flowers. Um, because I have that pink color kind of established throughout each flower as a base or as a mixed hue, I'm gonna do a yellow green as my stem color. Because if I use just permanent sap green by itself, that's mid green next to pink. Pink is a variety of red which is too contrasty for me and I want it to feel really bright so I'm gonna use a yellow green which will make this pink feel a lot brighter so I'm gonna add a stem here so look at how the direction of this flower is pointing down I want my stem to flow into that so I'm gonna start here and C curve in again if you haven't watched the video where I cover stems and leaves make sure you go watch that that will show you all you need to know on these next few bits. I'm gonna rotate my paper so I can paint this stem. And already I've kind of established the direction my wreath is going, which is this way. And now I can add in, once I have these main stems in, I can add in some leaves that flow off the flowers. making sure to mix up the value of each leaf. Maybe this stem goes behind this flower for another leaf up here. Let's grab some more yellow to really brighten this up. Leaves can really take up a lot of space on your wreath, so if you're feeling overwhelmed with all the white space, between your flowers, just start painting in leaves and stems and it'll really make it feel a lot easier to accomplish. Rotating my paper, because I like to pull my leaves. And maybe I'll just add in couple more leaves here and then I'll show you 
some filler tricks. Okay, so we're obviously not done here and I want to start incorporating my contrasting color to this peach, which is going to be blue. I want a more modern spring feel to this wreath. So I am going to use, instead of just like your traditional go-to dark blue, I'm gonna use a cobalt blue. And every once in a while, I'm gonna mix cobalt blue with a Prussian blue. And this is kind of like what I cover in my leaves video, how I do rosemary. I'm just going to add in little sprigs of blue by just kind of touching my brush to the paper here and there, switching up the value, adding Prussian blue to it every once in a while. And you see already how that blue color just adds vibrancy to the peach. It pulls your eyes in, makes you want to look at your piece for longer, especially when that bright blue is next to that peach. Again, this is loose florals, so if you don't like these like sprig, rosemary sprig type blue strokes, you can do eucalyptus leaves, silver dollar eucalyptus, like I show in the video on leaves. Love that bleed that just happened. So don't just do this because that's what I'm doing if you don't like it. I think it adds character and movement that I really enjoy in loose style florals. But again, experiment with what you're drawn towards. Maybe it's the circular, more eucalyptus style. So I'm just adding these down and then I'm also going to add stems to them too. Because we need some brown up in here. So at this point, I take a step back. I like to take a step back and look at where my color is landing and where the shape is kind of taking form. So right now we have a lot of green heavy and peach heavy on this side and not so much on this side. So I'm gonna balance that out by adding a couple flowers over here and keep adding in my filler. I'm gonna start first though with a burnt umber and a little bit of Mars Black to add in some stems to these blue spriggy, spriggy details. I'm not focusing on if they connect really, I'm just kind of adding in this color like a little dash here and there. Kind of breaks up all, all the green and blue and the peach. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna add in a couple more florals. And what I wanna do is show you how to paint a really basic rose that's kind of peeking out over here. And for roses, they're an unraveling of C curves. So it's basically like if you were to take your pencil or pen and just kind of do a circular shape that keeps extending like a hurricane. Um, but you don't follow, you pick up your paintbrush to show, you pick up your paintbrush to show separate petals. So I'm gonna start with this thinner 
seeker here in the middle and it's kind of like this rose is covered up on this side so we're just showing one side of the rose and then we're going to keep adding C curves that start to slightly get thicker and lighter as you get further away from the center. So it's super basic. All I did was thin C curves, kind of like a cloud shape on the side of this. I'm gonna make it a little bit more dense in the middle. And then I can come over here and do the same thing. You want to make sure that all of the ends of your C curves point back to the middle of your rows. That's a fun bleed. And then I'm going to add one over here because it feels a little, little empty. And then we just keep plugging away. I'm gonna add in some more leaves. And to close, I will add in one more color to bridge that gap between orangey peach and yellow green. We're gonna bridge it with yellow by itself with some yellow berries. Maybe add in some sprigs with this yellow green color. Fill in the shape over here. Maybe some darker green. You just kind of have to play with the colors you're using and the shapes of each flower, etc., in order to really find what you like. Um, but the general rule with color theory is to go after harmony versus strain. So if you really need help with this, do some research on color theory. My book has so much on color theory in it. And also just looking at a color wheel is super helpful in knowing what colors relate to each other. So as a final step, I'm just going to grab Lemon Yellow Deep by itself. And I'm going to add in some berries with or we can even call it like amaranthus, yellow amaranthus or something, um, with just yellow by itself. And so all I'm doing is kind of doing these motions that I like to call brushing your teeth, because if you think of brushing your teeth in these circle tiny motions, that's all I'm doing. Adding lighter values and darker values, smaller berries and bigger ones and we'll add stems to that as well once I get in some more. See how that yellow hints at being related to that peach and it's a nice in-between color of the yellow green and the peach. Always thinking about how color relates to each other. Colors relate to each other. And then one final tip for painting a floral wreath like this in this style is to make sure to not overdo it. A lot of people just get so in the zone that they just keep painting berries or leaves or whatever it might be. And you step back and it looks so overcrowded and really dense. And you wanna make sure that you're constantly taking steps back and making sure that the flow feels right, that the balance of color feels right so you're not putting all your pinks over here and all your blues over there or whatever. So you're kind of staggering 
all of that. And then also following the shape, but making sure that it's not a perfect circle as well. Okay, so this piece, it looks the way I want it to look. The colors look really nicely together and I'm creating nice harmony with using contrasting colors, but making sure that they balance really well next to each other. So I have a lot more blue on the page than I do orange. And the orange that I have on the page isn't direct orange. It's like a peachy color. So it's really not contrasting colors, whatever, but it hints at it and it creates this vibrancy that you wouldn't get if you were just using straight up mid orange and mid blue together, which to me isn't a really satisfying color palette for something like this. So all I'm doing now is just giving in my final touches, like little stems for these yellow berries or yellow sprigs and seeing if anything needs tweaking shape-wise. So if there's gaps anywhere, or if it's feeling boxy up in one corner, I might try to round it off, round it off with a leaf or some berries, etc. But this is a super fun way to practice very basic shapes of florals. Like again, what we did for peonies was we just followed that V shape or that overall circular shape. And then again, for the loose style of roses, all it was is C curves that point back to the center of that rose, which the overall rose shape is also a circle. So don't get too overwhelmed with looking at an actual rose, a photo of a rose, and then trying to translate that onto your paper and and also at the same time interpreting it in a loose style that's super overwhelming just look at and extract the overall shape of whatever flower it is you're trying to paint take that shape and add strokes to it so add curves add thin line thin lines add thick lines add white space to make it feel like separate petals etc that's all you really have to do and i know that it sounds simple but it really isn't when you get your paintbrush and you start painting like that for the first time so keep at it keep practicing and i really hope you enjoyed this video and you keep practicing the techniques i showed you in here and again if you need more help with leaves and stems etc check out the video where I cover everything you need to know about loose style of um, watercolor for leaves. It'll be linked in the description below. And let me know if you like this video and what you want to see in terms of painting in loose style florals. Do you want to see more wreaths, more about color palettes, composition, etc.? I would love to know your thoughts. Comment below. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel because there's going to be so much more content that's similar to this and more. So thank you again for joining us for this video and happy painting. Big news. We're doing a giveaway of this piece that I just painted in this video. This, 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 this. So if you want to win this piece, this floral springy wreath that I just painted. Comment below with your favorite flower or your favorite color and make sure you're subscribed to this channel and that you smash that like button. All three of those things will enter you into the giveaway where we will announce the winner who will win this piece and we'll mail it to you. So make sure to subscribe, like this video and comment below with your favorite flower or your favorite color and best of luck to you all.